Welcome back. So one of the cool things about DAX is that many of your favorite Excel functions work pretty much the same in DAX as in regular Excel, just on entire columns of data as opposed to individual cells. But there are also plenty of functions that really only make sense in the context of the data model. Now in this course, I'm assuming you know your way around the most common Excel functions, so we're going to focus on DAX specific functions from here on out. We'll start with a couple of relatively straightforward yet still very powerful functions, count rows and distinct count. So count rows does pretty much what it sounds like. It counts the number of rows in a table. Distinct count, on the other hand, takes a column as its argument and returns a count of the unique items in that particular column. So say we have a table with 30,000 rows, but then we have a column in that table with something like product category that only has five distinct product categories. Our distinct count function would return the number five. So let's go ahead and use these functions to create some new measures in our data model. Starting off simple, I'll create an order count measure that simply returns the number of customer orders we've taken. Now since the orders table in our data model contains one record for every customer order, our order count measure can simply be a count of rows in that table. Seems like an obvious use of the count rows function. So to create our measure, I'll again click our measures button and then new measure. And because this measure pertains to the orders table, I'll assign it to that table and I'll call it order count. And then for our formula, I'll use the count rows function. And as I mentioned, it takes an entire table as its argument. So we can start typing out the name of our orders table. And there it is. So we'll close our parenthesis and then hit check formula just to make sure everything's going to work. And then finally, we'll format our measure as a number. And because we're dealing with a count here, we don't need any digits after the decimal, but we will use the thousand separator. And then click OK. And now to see how this measure works for us, we'll use it in a pivot table where we break out order count by region. So I'll insert a new pivot table. And then I'll drag in region on rows. And then I'll look for our measure under our orders table. And there it is, order count. So we can drag that into values. And there we are, a quick and easy breakout of order count by region. Now next we'll do something slightly more interesting and more difficult to pull off in a conventional pivot table. And this will involve our distinct count function. Now what we're going to try to do is to create a measure that returns a count of the number of unique days on which we sold products. So regardless of how many orders we had, if we've only been selling product for a year, and out of the entire year there were only 350 days on which we made at least one sale, our distinct count function on our order date field would return 350, because it's returning the count of unique values in that field. Now this measure may not seem to have any obvious value, but you'll see how we'll be able to leverage it in just a minute. So to create our measure, I'll go back to our Power Pivot tab, hit the Measures button, New Measure, and again, this measure pertains to data in our orders table, so we'll assign it to the orders table, and we'll call it Number of Days Products Sold. Now for our formula, we'll use our Distinct Count function, and as you can see, this takes a single argument, which is just a column of one of the tables in our data model. Now what we want to do is return a count of the distinct values in the order date column of our orders table. So if we scroll down, we see that field in our orders table. So I'll double click that to select it, close our parenthesis, and then hit the check formula button as usual. And again, because we're dealing with a count, I'll choose a number format no digits after the decimal, and a thousand separator. And then click OK. 
And now looking at our pivot, where this measure was automatically added, we see that in many cases, the number of days our product was sold is very different and much less than the actual order count, which makes sense because there most likely are many days on which more than one customer order occurred. So all of those different orders are being tabulated in our order count measure, but only the unique days on which those orders were placed are being counted in our number of days product sold measure. Now on its own, this number of days product sold measure, again, probably doesn't seem too useful. But what I haven't told you yet is that you can actually use measures as building blocks to create other measures. So now that we have these two measures here, we can actually use them in a calculation to create a third measure, which can provide us some more interesting insights into our customer orders. Specifically, we can divide our order count by our number of days product sold to get an average of the number of orders placed per day, which I think you would agree is a fairly useful measure. So let's see how that would work. So again, I'll create a new measure. And since our building blocks are two measures that are already assigned to the orders table, it only makes sense to assign this one to that table as well. I'll name the measure orders per day. And then for our formula, I could simply divide one measure by the other. But the problem with simple division is that as you probably know, if your denominator is zero, that will trigger an error. Now in traditional Excel formulas, you'd have to resort to some kind of an if error function or an if function that tested for the condition that the denominator is zero to avoid this kind of situation. But DAX gives us a function called divide that allows us to return an alternate value in the event that there is a division error. In fact, divide is such a useful function, I recommend pretty much using it universally anytime you're doing division in your DAX formulas. So I'll start by entering the divide function. And as you can see, the first argument is the numerator, the number on top of the fraction, and that's going to be our order count. So if I just start typing the name of our measure, we see order count pop right up, and we know it's a measure because of that little sum icon to the left. So let's hit tab to enter that, and then a comma. And then for our denominator, we'll enter our second measure, which is the number of days products were sold. So I'll start typing that name. And as you can see here, nothing's happening. We're not getting any formula autocomplete suggestions. And that's just because we started the measure name with a pound symbol, so DAX is unhappy about me referencing that name without putting it in brackets. So let's backspace and type a, an opening bracket and then type a pound sign. And there's our measure. So we'll hit tab to select that one. And now the third argument, and this is what makes the divide function so cool, is what we want to return in the event that there's a division error. Now the obvious option is the number zero, but I personally prefer to use another DAX function called blank in this argument. Now blank will simply return exactly what it says, just a blank if there is any division error, which strictly speaking is more accurate than a zero. If there's a division error, there's really no number that's returned at all. So for our third argument, we'll enter that blank function. And Excel auto-populated the parentheses for that function. So now we'll enter our final closing parenthesis for our overall function, and then hit check formula as usual, and everything looks good. Now because we're performing a division calculation here, we'll probably want to format our number to at least have one number after the decimal place. And we're probably dealing with small enough numbers that we don't need to worry about a thousand separator, so we'll go ahead and click OK. And this measure has been automatically added to our pivot table as well, and if you look at the results, they appear to be accurate. For the one region where we had the same number of orders as there were days that products were sold, our orders per day number is one. But for most regions, the number is much higher, just as we would expect. And in case you think that for some reason we need to keep the two measures that this measure is based on in our pivot table in order for it to work, let's go ahead and cut those guys out. And as you can see, the measure still works. And I can't emphasize enough that you're not limited to using just a single layer of measures 
as you're building measures on other measures. It's quite common in the real world to have long chains of dependent measures, where measure A is built from measure B, which is built from measure C, and so on and so forth. And the best thing about this, as we'll see later, is that if you change the logic of a measure, all dependent or downstream measures will reflect that change automatically. Okay, now that we've gotten our feet wet with some DAX-specific functions, it's time to dive into perhaps the most important function in the entire DAX language. Calculate. That's up next. I'll see you then.